guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell, based on the title, this is going to be a deep dive on the brand Thoreau. I did a recent video where I looked at the style evolution of the Olsen twins. I touched a little bit on the row, but I wanted to sort of expand on this. I really wanted to do like a deeper dive and analyze what this brand is. So if you wanna know a little bit more about the style evolution of the Olsen twins, check out that video and then come to this. So the concept of the brand originated when they were 18 in search of the perfect white tee. And then that sort of extended to other basics like black leggings, leather leggings. So this is from their website. The row was established in 2006 by Ashley Olson and Mary Kate Olson, focusing on exceptional fabrics, impeccable details, and precise tailoring. The house combines a timeless perspective with subtle attitudes, which form an irreverent classic signature. The row's collections also explore the strength of simplistic shapes that speak to discretion and are based on uncompromising quality. They've also described their brand as a cross between Chanel and. Yoji Yamamoto. I think when they say Chanel, it may not necessarily be like the brand Chanel or kind of like the like signature design elements of Chanel, but I think sort of Coco Chanel sort of attitude of making fashion modern, sort of replacing that corset silhouette to something that was equally like luxurious, sporty, and embody that feminine chic. The influence of Yoji is seen in their love for the avant-garde tailoring. It's almost like architectural-like tailoring and the heavy use of black and luxurious materials. The premise of the brand is still pretty much that, high quality, elevated basics. It's kind of going for that like chic minimalism. Some people may even say this is like the wealthy person's Uniqlo. I kind of want to go a little bit deeper into the thinking behind the row, thoroughly analyze what the aesthetic choices behind the row are. And I think when we talk about these designers like BB Philo, when she was at Celine or like the row, because they're so like minimal and abstract, it's like really hard to like talk about these brands in like really like concrete ways. So I've been trying to find out like what is the best way to sort of explain the row? What is a concrete way of understanding the row? In order to talk about the row, something I started talking about with my video on Phoebe Philo at Celine was this concept of the modern woman and just this idea of making clothing for like the woman today, the woman now. What does she need in this moment? I think this concept of modernism is very prevalent in like Celine to like old Celine to even brands like Jill Sander. This attitude of like forwardness. What is the most like optimal use of clothing now? And I think looking at modernism is kind of like a good starting point to talk about the row. And I'm not gonna give you like a liberal arts like class on modernism, but just like three key takeaways that we kind of can get from modernism. Modernism is a product of the industrial revolution. Modernism is a rejection of the past and modernism is a search for something new. Modernism can take many forms and can be found in art, literature, furniture design, performance art. There's so many ways of talking about modernism, but honestly, one thing I did notice when I did my video on the Olsen twins was the response people had towards my connections with interior design or like architecture. So you know what? I thought, why don't we just look at architecture? I think architecture is something that is very relatable. It's something that we've all experienced. I don't know if we've all experienced like performance art at a museum. I don't think we've all can relate to modern poetry, but we've all been to buildings. We've all been in spaces. So I think this is like a good jumping off point. And there's so many different great ways of going about this. Like I could talk about Mies van der Rohe, the famous architect that said less is more. I could talk about Louis Sullivan, form follows function. I could talk about Frank Lloyd Wright, who really embraced Japanese design philosophy, but also wanted architecture to exist in harmony with nature. Honestly, it was like really close to like using Frank Lloyd Wright as an example. But one architect that I actually really want to talk about is Le Corbusier, and he's kind of the pioneer of modernist architecture. He is someone who kind of like just like changed the game for what we know as like modern design. So he was a Swiss architect. He was someone that doubled down, like tripled down on modernism. And when I did my style analysis video on Phoebe Philo, I really emphasized how there's just no care to like reference the past. I feel 99% of what we see on runways, it's like, oh, this is like 60s design, 70s design, 80s design. 2000s design, 2010, that's where we're getting to, right? Like it's always about how we reference something, but then like throw in something different. It's always about like creating like these certain vibes and like these narratives. Whereas these designers, Thoreau, Celine, like they might do that. They might make a color look 
70s or something. You wouldn't call their collection 70s. I would never look at a collection and be like, oh yeah, this makes me want to go to the disco like Gucci, which is just a totally different way of thinking about design. And Le Corbusier doubled down on this thinking. In the 1920s, he wrote a book called Towards a New Architecture. And he really talked about modernism as this like byproduct of the industrial revolution. This is just a quote from him. A grand epoch has just begun. There exists a new spirit. There already exists a crowd of works in this new spirit. They found especially in industrial production. Architecture is suffocating in its current uses. Styles are a lie. Style is a unity of principles which animates all the work of a period and which results in a characteristic spirit. Our epoch determines each day its style. Our eyes unfortunately don't know how to see it yet. A house is a machine to live in. I think this concept of design and fashion, just being now, like what is fashion now? And I think this idea of our epoch determines each day its style. What a weird way of speaking. Basically what he's saying today is how we dress. Like this is style, this is fashion. It's not about the past, it's about now. What are we doing now that informs our choices about our clothes? Are we wearing corsets like it's the 1700s or are we wearing clothes that we take public transportation in or are we wearing clothes that we can wear to the office but then coat to like dinner date after. Attitude of what you wear is dictated by the now. This is always gonna change and what clothing makes the most sense today. And for Le Corbusier, he came up with this concept called the five points for new architecture. Now, it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one comparison, but this sort of thinking about design and thinking about, it could be a house, it could be a space, it could be clothing, it could be how you do your makeup. These five points are ultimately just a like, more modern way of thinking. And keep in mind, this was like modernism in the 1920s. And if we just think about what was going on in the 1920s, even like the 1910s, kind of like Art Nouveau or like that arts and crafts movement to like Art Deco, his style of architecture was very like, whoa, like crazy, different, weird, but ultimately it was modern. In no particular order, we're gonna go over these points. So the first point is free design of the ground plan. Basically, this is open concept design, right? Partition walls versus open concept. Clothing can also be something that is open concept. This idea of like the modern woman or man having to transition from work to picking up their kids from school, going for dinner. The kind of clothing required for that lifestyle is not clothing that should be so segmented, right? You might wanna have clothing that is just really high quality, comfortable, but open concept. And I think that's one thing I feel about the row. Like you can wear pretty much any of their clothing to like almost any event. This isn't fancy couture pieces that are works of art. You can wear this clothing, albeit really premium materials, but you can wear these clothing to pretty much any occasion. Someone who I think nails this concept of an open concept wardrobe, I think it's someone like Rosie Huntington Whiteley. I think her fashion, it's so chic, it's so sophisticated, it's so elegant, effortless, but it's very open concept. For her as like a working woman, as a mom, as someone who also looks incredibly chic, who's very stylish, the row is very elevated, but extremely efficient. So point number two is Peloti, Pelotis. Basically, we're talking about pillars here, stilts or pillars. So this allows for, in a building, free ground circulation. Like if you wanted to, you could have like a garden exist beneath the residence. Of course, this isn't like a one-to-one -one comparison, but the reason why you would have like stilts and pillars is easy access, but it creates what is called aesthetic agility. And I think the row has this exact same aesthetic agility in their shoes, in their clothing, but if we're just gonna try to make this a one-to-one -one comparison with their shoes, right? Like if you look at their bare sandals, their T-bar sandals, they're just very lightweight. They're not like these big overpowering pieces at the bottom of your look. When we think of really fancy homes, right? Like it's gonna be maybe like a fountain or like a really pretty artwork on like a column or something. No, these stilts are very like simple. They're very streamlined, simple, gives like that sleekness. This exact same like sleekness exists in the row, that like aesthetic agility that allows for quick and easy movement. You could say this about pretty much all their pieces. To me, the shoes just really embody this concept of aesthetic agility. So point number three is free design of the facade. When we think about like a lot of exterior buildings, right? Like sometimes you might see like a beautiful brick building and it's like really gorgeous, but it doesn't feel integrated with space, nor does it really allow for a lot of light to enter in. The whole concept of this is the exterior of the building is not restricted. You want to free a building from conventional restrictions. It ultimately makes a building look lighter and more open. And when we look at this in terms of clothing, right? Free design, 
of the facade. Like there isn't like this focal point essentially. That's not to say you can't create looks where you have like an outfit with a row and then your focal point is maybe you have like a beautiful clutch or like a pair of Manolos or something. You can definitely do that, but I feel the way the Olsen twins often wear it, it feels very integrated. The face of the building is like integrated with the interior. Someone who did this would be Frank Lloyd Wright. He believed you wanted to bring the outside in. He used like elements of like Japanese design, but in very like horizontal ways. And he believed that the experience of going into a home was about feeling your surroundings, the nature, and creating that like harmony with nature, that balance with nature, not having this like home from like a specific century against a landscape. It was about creating harmony between that. The lesson of this is I think you don't necessarily need to have like a center point to your outfit. Some stylists might even argue when it comes to fashion, you should want your clothing to almost not be the center point and you actually want your clothing to draw up to your face. So someone who I think like does this really well and I just found this picture of Angela Angelina Jolie, but this is how she just generally dresses. Here she is wearing this Martina dress by the row, and you see like the pleats like lead up to her face, right? Like it's just a beautiful, elegant pleated dress. She's added a belt, she's added a brown, I believe this is a Celine Triumph bag. And then she has these like nude shoes. The whole outfit like leads up to her face. It drapes her body beautifully. That kind of is very much the opposite. I find a lot of perspectives where it's always, oh, you want your handbag to have like a pop of color, or you want your shoes to be this showcase. So the fourth point is horizontal windows. The point of horizontal windows is they create like a sense of space, lightness, again not really the perfect one-to-one -one comparison, but I would say like their overall silhouettes allow for clothing to breathe, be it allowing clothing to be oversized or removing the restrictions of tailoring to allow for clothing to just be like more breathable. Creating space and lightness to allow for movement is I think something that is very visible in clothing by the row and we just see it collection after collection. I think the lesson is to change or challenge the silhouette or proportion. Let's just like literally look at the Olsen twins themselves. I'm someone that is petite, so when I look at how they dress, it's like, oh, they're breaking all the rules of like petite dressing. If you're petite, you should wear things that are elongating. You shouldn't wear things that are boxy and wide. You should wear things that are bigger, hugging. Just wearing things that are like slender, wearing like heels. They break all the rules, but they're breaking these rules because it feels natural. Think about how like Victorian houses were to like Gothic architecture. Like it's always buildings that want like to appear slimmer and like longer, like leaner windows. Whereas when you look at Frank Lloyd Wright, you create that sense of space and lightness. And I think that's what the Olsen twins are doing with their clothing. You have that like sense of space and lightness. Their clothing just has this ethereal like lightness to them. So the fifth point is the roof garden. Now, of course, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison. Like there's no way, you know, you can have like a roof garden on the top of your head. Like, no, it's not, this, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison. The purpose of a rooftop garden is to create a sense of harmony and utility and aesthetic. When you look at like really brutalist architecture, they just look really depressing to me. They're very like cold and harsh, very little nature involved. We're having organic touches to your clothing, to your fashion, will like soften a very harsh minimalist look. Obviously the roof garden is gonna create cohesive or something just more holistic. It can make some like some loose connection with sustainability, but if I'm just gonna just look at it from like an aesthetic perspective, I think the use of natural materials, be it from cotton to like silks to cashmeres, to even like crocodile, to exotics, to furs. I think it softens the look. I think the use of fur, croc, makes their outfits not look so brutalist. The way the Olsen twins will carry a crocodile tote as their work bag. Most people wouldn't be willing to spend $20,000, $30,000, $40,000, I have no idea how much these bags are. Like a $30,000 bag as their everyday work bag. But again, like they're so wealthy, like why not, right? I think the row kind of just embodies this attitude of modernism in like a very luxurious way. Of course, this isn't going to be a one-to-one -one comparison to Le Corbusier's five points to a new architecture, but yeah, I feel like these are like five points to modern dressing, be it open concept design or open concept clothing, creating aesthetic agility, cohesiveness, space and lightness, and lastly, like natural materials or even like the use of premium or exotic materials. The other thing about modernism is it's always about change. If something no longer serves you, then you change it. You don't 
stick with that. If your shoes are done, or if you just feel like your shoes don't make sense for your lifestyle anymore, just get a new pair. Like that's kind of the sense of modernism. Now, is that the most sustainable? No, but I do think that when you buy the row, these are wardrobe building pieces. Personally, I don't know. This is just my personal style here, but I'm not someone that can take on this hardcore modernist minimalist aesthetic. The thing is like with the row, right? Like when you see how the Olsen twins dress on the red carpet, they're still gonna be their own personal injection of funky accessories, right? Like they're still gonna do that. But I just think when we're speaking about the clothing, I really can't commit to this aesthetic. And the reason being is while I wouldn't call myself a classic person when it comes to fashion, I do like things that are classic, but my style isn't classic. I'm definitely someone that appreciates things of the past. I like elements of the past. I like taking on some aspects of modernism, but if something like gives me a feeling of nostalgia, I'm gonna embrace it and that's okay. Like that's why I love like vintage things. And I think the Olsen twins are like this too, right? Like they have like an epic vintage collection, but I think that's how you kind of make things your own. If the row feels too cold, allow yourself to, if you have a decade you really like or a certain vibe or something you really like, it's okay to embrace whatever that is. So yeah, that is my video. Thank you so much for joining me in another video and I hope to see you in the next one.